Um, so as I said, as Jim was wrapping up, for those that haven't met me, I'm Lauren Alvord, um, and this is Beth Barr. I'll do a quick introduction, because then we won't have to come back to that as others are introducing themselves. But as, as Jim said, I came here from Intel. Both Beth and I retired from Intel. I'd been with them for 32 years and retired last June, and we have this Encore program where you can go get matched with a nonprofit. And, um, I was friends with Damon Smedley and his family in New Mason, so many of you know or have read their story. Um, so I immediately said when I retired, I want to go help Cure JM. So that's my connection. I don't have an impacted child. Um, knock on wood, I still have, I have twin eight-year-olds, and um, so I, I worry every day what you don't know, right? Um, but my connection here was coming here through Damon, and then um, Beth, why don't I let you introduce yourself real quick, and then we, you know we're going to start with April, and we'll recap kind of what our quick agenda is here with you guys today. Hi, I'm Beth. Um, Beth Barr. And I also also came from Intel, and I also have the Mason connection, and so Lauren recruited me because I was also eligible for the Fellows Program. So Lauren <laughs> recruited me to come help Cure JM, and I had gone to the Smedley's events, and uh, so I knew about it, and I, I had helped out before. So definitely, definitely a great thing. And uh, I am helping develop the chapters. Yeah, we're just going to let April go because she needs to be in multiple places at once. And so April will introduce herself. I know you guys all know who she is, at least <coughs> by name now. Um, but she's also going to miss the rest of the meeting. So I asked her if she could just not only introduce herself, share what she's learned so far from planning her Austin walk so we can all benefit from that and then we'll learn more post the walk. That's great. And some help needs that you're going to ask for. Yes. So anyone who wants to, I'll start with that, anyone who wants to um, volunteer or help out with the walk, even if it's prep work, for instance, we have lots of balloons to tie, um, please feel free to come to, there's a meeting on Saturday at 5.30 I believe. It's either 5 or 5.30, it's on your schedule. Um, it's not conflicting with any other uh, session, so you won't miss a session, but if you're interested, come there and we'll give you all the info and you can help us out, that'd be great. Um, so essentially, I'm, my name's April, my son has JM, um, he was diagnosed, I'm really bad at the years, I know people keep count of IVIGs and stuff like that, I don't, just because we have, I think it makes me sad if I count it, so I know it's been three, maybe four years, something like that, um, he was in sixth grade. And he's now a sophomore, so one, two, three, four, yeah, four years. Um, that's how I could do it. So I've been in this area since then and um, very connected, you know, I met up with Sissy and um, the huge group that we have here in Texas that comes down for their annual conference. And we did a walk for Chase um, back one of the first years he was diagnosed. And so that, I think that's how it led to asking me to help chair the walk here. Um, we have a great, amazing team. One of the things I would say is work on getting a team. If you could get at least two or three solid people who will help in, throughout the time so you're not doing everything, that would be the best. Um, we have a huge team, but uh, most of the work is being done by like three people. So I feel like if you can find those key superstars and fill in others because the, the, things happen with life with medical and everything, so more the merrier. Don't worry about it, and if not, don't stress about it. It all comes together. <laughs> um, one of the key things that I wanna leave you with is donors. So one of the things I learned is that going back um, anywhere from six months, two to six months before your walk is the best time to ask, 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 apply, 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 apply. Because a lot of them are online. If you don't know anyone there, apply online. And if you do know somebody, always go through the connection first, obviously, because that's where you get in the door. However, I will also say, by doing it early, so you can make those deadlines, and that way you more than likely will get accepted, you also have to then wrap up and come again. One of the lessons I learned is that I lost almost every donor we had. When I say donor, I mean as far as donations. Sponsors have not backed out, like the ones writing the checks, they write the check, they're done. The ones who have donated items, so like for us, we've got, we were getting DJs, stages, all sorts of things donated, food. Those, I went back around December, two months prior, just kind of confirming details, making sure we're good, what we were gonna get, because a lot of times six months before they prove it, but don't wanna go over details yet. Two months prior, I went back to them to find out, to see if I could get at least what exactly are you gonna donate to make sure I had my needs covered. 
I had all that lined up. I lost almost every single donation in the past two weeks. So, but the positive is, um, by going back in the past two weeks, calling to confirm what time they're arriving, when I could pick it up, all that stuff, I found out, oh, we forgot, or oh, we did this or that. However, then I just had, that gave me two weeks to panic and get it in and get it reconnected. <laughs> so a lot of them, once you tell them what it's for, like for instance, we have bagels for part of our food. You have to go pick them up and freeze them and then unfreeze them in order to have them. So we did all that and you have a 10 minute window to pick them all up. Well, the store that we were going to go to that was going to give us all the bagels, when I called to set up the date to come, he goes, I accidentally booked somebody else there. I, that just got me into a roar of calling all the rest of them because I know they have that program. So like Einstein Bagels has a program where you can get bagels donated as long as you go pick them up. Well, when I told them our need, they, another store, I think we called four stores and finally got one, another store kicked out one of their other people and gave them to us and explained to them, look, this is for kids. We have to do this. <laughs> so, you know, don't, don't it's, it's stressful at the end, but I would say don't worry about it. Keep hounding, keep calling. The key there is to have midpoints to keep contacting because you'll want to definitely do two weeks out because more than likely they possibly could have dropped you just because I had a lot of those. Um, other key things. Ask, don't be afraid to ask, because by asking you find out, so for example, Michelle's a really good example here. Michelle had contacts who her dad knew somebody who could help us donate buses. So that saved a lot of money. Or, you know, just asking, because they know other people too. So not just in your little commun uh, committee, ask beyond, you know. It's almost like the seven degrees of separation keeps going. Um, I'm trying to think of any other lessons learned because I feel like that's the most important thing is what we learned from this and how we can improve. Um, I personally think one thing we can do, and I didn't say anything on this, but printing wise, I'm wondering if we can get to an app or a electronic because you could save a lot of money. Printing is so expensive. So that's something that maybe down the road might not be obviously for these walks coming up right away except unless you have a tech savvy person who can do that. I think that would be a huge savings. Um, volunteers. Volunteers are hard to get as well, but a lot of times if you get into the schools, um, the schools have been very successful. Um, organizations, people you don't even think that volunteer. I was at, at Costco last night picking up some stuff, and somebody was trying to sell me something, you know, one of those little stations. She's like, you know, our, she, I had my Cure JM shirt on, and she's like, what is that? And so I explained it to her, and she's like, our company would like to come, but I don't know if we can because it's only two days. Can you tell us next year? So just... Random companies you wouldn't think would do it, will do it. So a lot of times also not only ask for donations, but ask, do they have a volunteer program? So like, you know, your Sam's, your Costco's, they all have programs where their employees volunteer and then they get a match. And some of them even then have matching funds that come back to the organization as well. So Kohl's, Sam's, Costco, all three have those. Um, HEB kind of does. Um, it depends on where the area is. And then, so those are like, I call those double, double whammies. We get money and volunteers and donations. Um, also ask for like if they won't give you a money, then you go for can I get a gift card to buy stuff to offset. Even the weirdest place that you don't think you want a gift card, for instance, we got some random stuff like for movie passes. Well, I can't really use that for a walk, but I can. I could turn it into a raffle and sell or turn it into an auction. So we did an auction and raffle prior to the walk, and that was for all this random stuff that we couldn't use for the walk, but ended up while we were out and about asking for things. These were other items that came in. Um, Michelle, is there anything else I'm probably missing out that you can think of? Not only your connections, I know this is going to sound weird, but I even took two days off of work and just literally went door to door in Lakeway, and we got stuff that way too. However, every single one of them, bring your paper that has your EIN number, what you're doing it for, what date you're doing it, because a lot of them will have you leave it there. Make a list of who you left it with. Call in two weeks. Call again in another two weeks. Call again in another two weeks. And I probably had most of the people we have lined up for free stuff probably called about six times. Eventually they want to get rid of you to call in so much, so like here, how about $50? I'll 
I'll take it. Thank you. <laughs> so, you know, it, it works out if you just keep, don't, don't be afraid of the no. You're going to get 100 no's, and then you'll get a yes, and it's okay. <laughs> I think that's it. Any, any quick questions before I lead out? Sorry, I had to do it backwards. I think that your effort so far has been amazing. Thank you. Really, as a great group. Great. I really hope everybody goes out and does swaps because it's good. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, April. So now we want to do, um, we really wanted to have time for folks to introduce themselves because some of you have been on the phone calls together. You, some of you have been at past conferences together, but not everybody has. So we think it's important to know each other. And then we'll do updates from the, um, chapter presidents and the walk chairs and um, tell you just about some handouts in case you want to have them. So let's meet everyone. Okay. Should we see you? Please. <laughs> Hi, I'm Marianne Van Ness uh, from Long Island and my grandson Bradley was diagnosed with uh, JDM when he was seven and he's 10 now. He's doing good. I'm Tracy Van Ness. It's my son, Bradley. Uh, that's diagnosed with juvenile dermatomyositis. I'm the chair for New York. So Texas, where are you? I'm looking out for you. <laughs> I think a little healthy competition is wonderful um, as their goal is set as 125. I think that's amazing um, as you know, a little chair as ourselves trying to, uh, to look forward to this. So I look forward to working with you. Hello, I'm Jane. My son Landon has JM and I'm just looking forward to meeting the rest of you at the conference and getting inspired by all the great ideas. Oh, currently living in Tennessee. Uh, my name is Julie Shevlin. I am a JM mom, and uh, I am a newly new person on the board of directors for Cure JM. Um, so if you see me kind of really confused, it's because I just sat through a really <laughs> long meeting yesterday, and I was just inundated with all this wonderful information. <laughs> um, so I am learning just like the rest of you, but um, can't stress enough that all the efforts that you all are doing and uh, encouraged to do, I just can't stress that, that things that are happening are amazing. So pat yourself on the back for everything you're doing. And I, I'm from Seattle, and I did uh, lead the first Walk Strong that we had in October. So I guess I'll talk more about that a little bit later. Hi, I'm Sheila Harvey. Um, my granddaughter Daisy has JM, and we're from Louisiana. Sorry for my voice, been struggling with sinus. Um, we're from Louisiana, so we're just trying to learn uh, how we can fit in and what all you amazing people are doing. Hi, I'm Kristen Prescott, and I'm Daisy's mom, and she has JM. <laughs> Hi, I'm Reagan Cantrell. I am from Louisiana as well. And my first Cure Jam conference was actually Austin 2010. Cooper was diagnosed 2005. And um, he's now 14 and a half and just taken on the world. He's doing really well. So um, I'm happy to be back here with all of you guys. And um, I am a board member and I've sat on the board for oh, four years five years, I don't know, it's been a while. But it's been a great experience and i um, happy to do it. And I can tell you, getting involved, the biggest thing was it, it made me feel like I was in control of something. Because with your children being sick, you don't have any control. And for me, that was why I joined the board. And so it's been a great experience. But thank you for all of y'all, all of your efforts, um, coming to all of our conferences year after year. It really means a lot, so thanks for everything you'll do. I'm Michelle Best. I am from the D.C. area. <laughs> um, I am the chapter chair, and our walk chair is en route, Simonetta. Hi, I'm Denise Cook. I'm the Chicago chapter chair. I've been the uh, family Support Network representative for the Midwest, Illinois, Indiana, and, and Michigan for several years. Um, uh, my daughter Jessica was diagnosed with juvenile polymyositis 11 years ago. 
Um, and this is what I tell a lot of my brand new parents when I get to contact them after they've registered. This is a very difficult disease. It is rare. It is unique to every child, but we are not alone. My daughter was diagnosed shortly after turning 17. The disease was devastating. The, the treatment, as we all know, is very aggressive. She graduated high school, graduated college. She has a wonderful job at a good company in the Chicago area. In her field of study, she's married to a fabulous young man, and she's doing well. Yes, she takes medication every day. Yes, there are things, I mean, challenges. But to meet her, you would never know there's anything wrong with her. And what I always remember when she was in college, we were lucky, we had Dr. Pachman at now called Lori's at Children's Memorial in Chicago. And they would do an assessment. And part of it, one of the questions was, are you able to keep up with your friends? And the crazy thing is, just like all of your kids, with this disease, our children are absolutely amazing. They are absolutely amazing. She went to college, she went to high school with perfectly healthy kids. That when somebody would say, let's do whatever, she was right there. She did it. As all her friends were complaining, oh, it's too far, oh, it's too hard, oh, whatever. These children are amazing. When I think back in my lifetime, who my heroes are, She's, she's my biggest hero because through all of this, I mean, we were lucky. She was 17. We weren't, we, I mean, she was fairly well grown up. But at age 17, all the challenges she met, she went from being an athlete in school to barely being able to move and came back from that. I, it is. Our kids are absolutely amazing. So what I always try to stress to these, these new families is what you're going through right now is horrible. It is horrible. And you will get through it and things will become better. And they'll consistently get better. So um, I'm excited for what's coming up in the future. And I'm scared to death because this is, I mean, this is big. I mean, when we got, I got called by Shannon to say, hey, let's do a meet and greet in less than a month in Chicago. It was like, huh? <laughs> and I wanted to turn the mic over to a, one of our, they were a newly diagnosed family, and I put the feelers out to, to the families, hey, do you know of any place we could do a meet and greet? And this woman came to my aid. Hello. So um, my name is Sharon Ortega. My, I'm too loud. My daughter is actually homeschooling back here. Melinda was diagnosed a year ago on January 6th. She went from being a very strong athlete, she was a competitive gymnast, to not even being able to get out of bed. She's doing amazing now. This is our first trip without a wheelchair. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> So Denise, um, I met her early on, contacted me. Oh, of course, I teach this, this nursing program. I'll get you this room. And from there on, we've got a really good facility, right? So I've been helping out with family outreach and whatever these wonderful ladies need from me. Um, getting teams for the walk. I don't know, whatever else you need to. So I've been glad to get involved. And honestly, you feel so helpless when your child's diagnosed. And this is the way I feel like I'm giving back. And it actually helps me cope with everything I've been through the past year, too. Thanks. Hi, I'm Jennifer Coe from Illinois. I'm the Co-Chicago Committee chapter chair, whatever. And I'm also doing the walk, which is very scary. It's very scary. Um, our walk is in less than 90 days. Um, my daughter Kennedy is actually our first um, conference was the uh, last time we were in Austin and this is our second so yeah that's fun. yeah thanks um, and yeah I'm excited to talk to the other walk chairs see if everybody else is as scared as I am and I learned talked on the phone a lot Can you get to meet? <laughs> yeah okay good uh, hi I'm John actually I uh, don't have any children but my mother got diagnosed with a uh, dermatomyositis about three years ago uh, so I've been trying to learn as much as I can about and help out. Uh, I recently moved to Austin, and I found out about this about a week ago. 
And uh, I, I hit up um, Kristen and Shannon about volunteering. They told me that uh, they're, too, they're, they're filled, and I told them I was tall, and that got me in. So I, <laughs> I feel good about it. But, um, but to, to your point, my mom is my hero, and I'm just trying to learn as much as I can. I'm really happy to be here and uh, happy to move things and push things for everyone that needs it. So yeah, thank you. And you're saving the men for last, which is probably a good thing. So. Uh, my name is Jeff Mingus, and my daughter Kira is, uh, was diagnosed in 2011, so this is our first conference. We're here to um, really primarily for her to meet other kids that are going through this. That was the first event we held. That was the most positive thing that came out of that as we met a young lady 30 minutes away that was a little bit older so we could see someone down the road when we were in that moment of despair. So we're just here to meet other families and meet other kids and, and become more involved. So appreciate the opportunity. Missouri. Thank you. And Jeff also does great fundraisers. So for those of you who are either trying to inspire your families to go do fundraising that you've reached out to or you yourself are looking for more ideas, hit him up on breaks and in between what you can share too when we go back around and, and the, the um, Walk and Chapters um, report out, you can share some of your fundraising. The, um, and before I turn it back over to kind of get the updates, you know, from my perspective, I think a couple of the things that I hear probably from every one of the walks is, oh my God, it's really hard to reach out to families. We don't know the, you know, some, some, some of the areas are tighter, They've, they know each other, others don't. So you've got lists of names and, you know, emails and whatnot, but you don't know the folks. So, you know, I'd love some of that sharing as you go. Um, I know all of the, the walk chairs have our walk toolkit. I also have just three copies up here just to share that you guys can pass around that are kind of organized. And then I have additional ones that aren't in the binder you're welcome to take a copy of. Um, within the toolkit there's attachments. The only ones I printed were kind of where I thought people might want to flip through them and that's on our family outreach and on our fundraising coaching. Because I think those are areas we can all keep learning from each other and gaining our confidence in how to get folks to go do the fundraising and how to reach out to these families when you might contact 30 of them and get one person to talk to or one reply back. How do you keep that energy going? Because we need all of you guys and we need all of the families that are in your areas to, to lean in and either come to the walks or do fundraising for you. So we, we printed those out. There's also up here, don't get intimidated by it, it's also in the toolkit, the walk task list. So when you're trying to find out, you know, and I know Jen back there, you know, she's hung out at Starbucks one day and like went through this and asked me lots of questions. So then I realized everything I was behind on <laughs> that I had to go do. But we're trying to use it just to make sure we don't miss big things. So that's up here. And then last but not least, um, we were told to bring copies of kind of required paperwork. Many of you would have filled it out in the past or at registration on non-disclosure, conflict of interest, social blah, 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 media. social media. So if you haven't filled it out, it is important to us as an organization to keep, you know, CureJM safe. So, Please, if you didn't do it registration or haven't done it pre previously, grab these. They're really quick to read and fill out. So that's sort of my paid administrative part. Uh, yeah, I have a handout here on um, kind of an overview of chapters. Uh, I have somewhere a box of chapter guides, but FedEx says they delivered it, but nobody can find it. So hopefully by the end of the day, I have, a <laughs> I have hard copy chapter guides for everybody. So really what we want to do, this is in essence our quarterly meeting. So we started these last year, or at least that's when Beth and I became known to them. I don't know if you did them before last year. Um, and it's the opportunity, sometimes we hold them separately with, with just the chapters and just the walks, but honestly it's so integrated. We thought, that's kind of silly, we're going to miss out if we like segregate, you know, walks from chapters. So we want to use this as our quarterly um, update and go back around and have folks you know, talk about if you're, if you're with a chat, if you're the chapter president, you know, what have you done? What do you've got coming up so others can learn? Because we don't have this complete cookie cutter yet. So there's uniquenesses. And for the walks, you know, we've got three, well, there's the, the one this weekend, but April's off getting that squared away. But then we have DC, Chicago, and New York all on top of each other, two in May, DC in June. 
Um, and those are coming up really quickly. So when April's like, you know, well, you know, three months in advance, well, we don't have three months in advance, right? So I want to, you know, I want to make sure that you can share what you're doing so people can learn and steal with pride. And then if you've got help needed, and Beth has graciously agreed, you know, if there's things we need to capture, we'll get those captured for sharing, or certainly any action items that we need to help with, you know, coming out of here or while we're at the conference to make sure you know, all of those walks, you know, let's, let's all go beat Texas. Don't tell April I said that. <laughs> um, do we want to go in any particular order? Or since Tracy was brave enough to sit up front, should I just start with Tracy? <laughs> All right. Am I going to get feedback? This one's on? Okay. Okay. So, again, I'm Tracy Van Ness. I'm the chair for the New York uh, chapter walk. Um, so, where we stand? Where we stand is we had an exciting update about um, probably about four weeks ago we were able to confirm the date. Um, we're having the walk at a, uh, a county park on Long Island. Um, that's where we decided to go and get the permit. Um, and they wouldn't go ahead and release the date until 2017 calendar. So uh, January 2nd, like a rabid dog, I started to uh, blow up her email box of, I need confirmation for the date. I have to get PR out on this, you know. And then finally, uh, not too long ago, they confirmed the date. Our, our walk is on Long Island again in Eisenhower Park on May 13th. Um, so we're really excited that we locked down the date. We have a little different situation um, because we're uh, working with a county park. Um, part of the agreement of getting the permit is we have to use their vendors. Um, so unlike other walks, which Seattle sounded, I am like such a foodie. They had food trucks. I'm completely jealous of that because with the New York walk, we're stuck with a certain, a certain catering company that I've never heard of. Um, but that just means all our food and drink and things like that. So unfortunately, uh, I thought that was very interesting of the, uh, the Texas chair where she was able to get donations from certain food groups and, and things like that. That unfortunately uh, won't be apl applicable to us in the form of food anyway. It doesn't mean we can't go after them for, like we said, gift cards or something else and you know think outside the box as far as those things are concerned. Um, so, so far, um, we have a pretty good team going. Um, we've raised uh, close to $15,000, and our walk is about three months away. So that's pretty good so far. We're happy with that, but not happy enough, especially here in the 125 mark. Uh, a little healthy competition, again, would, would be good. Um, I have about uh, 10 team members, and then each team, uh, like we have Team Bradley. That's the name of our team. So far, I have uh, six uh, separate team members under me that will do their separate fundraising as well, but it'll all go, you know, all in all to the uh, to the walk. Um, and that's how about slow but surely we're getting going. Uh, Lauren and Beth have been. Um, I just want to thank you very much because I have never run a walk or done anything like this. And Shannon approached me and said, "Hey, you'd make a good walk chair." And I'm like, "Sure." And then I'm like, "Oh my God, what did I sign myself up for?" <laughs> But it's all, it's all good. I think, um, I think what's said time and time again with Lauren's guidance, she's, she's amazing um, on these calls that we have with the, with the New York Walk people, um, is that the whole key, I think, for any of the Walk chapters is certainly to get other people to help you. I think as the chair, you feel like, oh, I have to get this done. And if it's not successful, it's a, it's a, re a reflection of me. And that's not true at all. And it's such, you want to make it such a big event that is really impossible for one person to do, uh, small but mighty, that's been said about us before. And I think that that certainly applies to the walk as well. Um, so, you know, it's coming along slowly but surely. But um, I have more specific questions. I guess we'll save that for the end. Sure. Yeah, OK. Anything else you want to know? You got to come up to the podium. There we go. Thank you. Uh, my name is Kevin Coffey. I'm the co president of the New York chapter of CureJM. And I'm very excited to be working with Tracy and the team for the walk. 
And here's the real leader. Hi, my name is Doreen Coffey, and Kevin and I are both co-presidents, and nice to see you all. And they do amazing at fundraising as well. They, I was sip and paint. They did a sip and paint and raised like $10,000. So, you know, a more complicated fundraising, but, you know, it's another one. As you guys are wanting ideas or ideas to share with their families, um, get with Doreen or Kevin on a break or later and learn about how they did that because it sounds amazing. I wish I was there for that. So let's go, um, I'm going to go back to Chicago. <laughs> And I don't know if you want to talk from back here or go up there. Or how else. So our, um, we had the same thing with getting a permit for the beautiful city of Chicago. We're not like easy to work with. Isn't that crazy? So we uh, didn't get our permit date solidified until mid-January, and it's going to be Sunday, May 7th. Um, so right now, we have raised $13,000. We have 25 teams, and we've secured 10 sponsors, which three of them are just our donations. Um, and right now we're just really working on securing rentals and day of plans, and I think now we're more focusing on the finer details and realizing we don't really know, other than walking, we're not sure what we're gonna be doing at our event. <laughs> so, yeah, we're definitely gonna walk, but yeah, it makes the money, but besides that, I don't know. And, um, yeah, so I do have questions for everyone else that's... Um, I just want to mention, you brought up a good point, because I'm like, uh, we walk, and uh, what happens? <laughs> like, how exactly does this happen? Because, like you, um, I've never done an event like this before. Um, I think it'll be um, very important for us to support Texas. Of course, we're going to support them. Um, and go to their walk, because then you get to see firsthand. So the reason I'm bringing it up is because they have the opportunity to do um, a fundraiser for um, MDA walk, muscular dystrophy. Uh, it was held in the city, and um, juvenile dermatomyositis, just so you know, qualifies for an MDA diagnosis. So they do a lot of support as far as we're concerned, and Bradley attended a summer camp for the first time this past summer, um, sponsored by the MDA. So we went out to that walk, and when I tell you, people must have thought I was like the biggest weirdo going, because I was taking photos of like the signs that they had, and I was really taking in everything that they did for their walk, and of course it set the fire off for ideas for us. Um, so when you attend another walk, if you have the possibility to do that, it's so important, because you can see how theirs was organized, what, they, what you do the day of a walk, um, and it was super, super helpful. So I think um, the walk on Sunday for Texas is going to be really, really helpful, um, just as the M Day walk was for us. So. Yeah, well, and of course they're doing it both here, right? And, and the, the walk, I believe, has far more attendees than the run, from what I understand. But Beth and Shannon and I have talked about it, you know, and I think it's something, you know, we do want to start slow. We want to make sure that our walks are wildly successful. So let's, you know, all hit and really exceed on the goals there. The, um, from the research that I've done, um, runs attract different people. So if we start to think we max out on who's going to come to a walk, people that run come because they run, right? People that come to the walk are, care about your cause or care that you care about your cause, right? So it's a different audience. So it might be different, you know, approach, different marketing. We don't have a run toolkit. I mean, I'm sure we could still from Austin and others. But um, so you know, let's get these successful. But you know, for the future, we can you know look at these ideas. We can take them to the board. We've got three board members here, which is great. Um, you know, and see what's possible in the future. And I think in the in the meantime, and Kevin brought this up with 
during Jim's meeting and had brought it up in one of the New York calls, or maybe you did, Doreen, I forget. Um, the, the idea of, like, particularly for areas like New York and maybe DC, where you've got folks that are today assigned to your area, but they're not gonna come out to Long Island, right? And can we stream, can we have a small group, you know, walking on a track at the high school wearing the t-shirts, streaming it back to your walk and vice versa, or, you know, I'm maybe naming the technology wrong, but, you know, um, Facebook Live or whatever it might be. And, you know, I think exploring a few of those ideas that we can do th this round in conjunction with the walk is a great place to start with it. So, and before I leave Chicago, they, I just want to give a couple of shout outs. I mean, they have done an amazing job on sponsors. In fact, I need to summarize it because I promised DC I would summarize for them what you guys have done and I haven't done that yet. Um, so, you know, as you're, you know, talking to folks, you know, spend time asking, you know, Jen and company, you know, how did you go get your sponsors? What did you do? I mean, they're just, I think you guys are our role model on grabbing sponsors. So that's, you know, a great thing to, to pick up from there as well. And I was going to even have you go next, Julie, so <laughs> you have a question, too. Oh, I was just going to comment to the, the 5K idea versus the walk. And um, one thing that I found that was helpful for me was that there was a lot of in uh, having, it, having it be a walk and a, a, anyone can do it. Um, you know, you can be in a wheelchair. You can be in a stroller. You can... You can it doesn't matter, or, or you can not walk it. You can just come to be a part of the event. Um, so that really helped us sell it, where with a 5K, you know, oh, I've, I've got shin splints, or I've got an ankle, I'm not good enough to do that. That's more of a barrier for people. Um, so I, I appreciated this idea of a walk, even though I was hesitant as well at the start. Um, but what I found from from our Seattle experience is it creates that sense of community within the group. And so there's no timing chips, there's no first place, there's no one's pushing to the front to try to get up there. You know, there, there's no competitiveness whatsoever, except for the, you know, my 10 year old son who just had to run the whole thing, you know. <laughs> but it really did just create this sense of acceptance and people were just walking and just taking their time and chatting to everyone. And it was such a wonderful um, sense of community. So I, I hope we experience, I know we'll experience that on Sunday and I'm sure we will with all the walks. Do you want, I know you've already got your 2017 date set for uh, yeah, don't yeah. give me anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <Yeah>. <laughs> so we do, we have, um, we're doing early October again. We have our date set. Um, we, in Seattle, we, and some of you might have been on our last call, so I apologize if there's a little bit of repetition, um, but I, I reiterate everything April said. I think she did a great summary of things to think about. Um, in Seattle, we had about 300 people. We have, we have trouble in Seattle with our CureJM families, um, getting them to gather getting them to become engaged. And I don't know if it's the rain or the clouds or the grayness, but we, challenge, we, we are challenged with that. Um, but this walk really made it happen. And it was amazing. I mean, we had so many, I think we had 30 families. So many of them had never met another JM family ever. And they showed up at this walk and it was just amazing for them. So. Um, we, what we had to do is we dedicated one, almost one and a half people really just connecting to get people to the event, to reach out to our JM families. Um, that was a full-time job, at least for us in Seattle. So um, that's just something to keep in mind depending on your area and how connected you all are, all are already. Um, I would say, like, like some of you have said, that creating your team those are, that's the most important part you're gonna do right from the start and to find those key people that are in a place in their life where they can make this, this commitment. Um, looking for volunteers, uh, just to add on to what April said, um, looking for groups, things like Girl Scout groups or you know the volleyball team that can stand there at the finish line and just create energy and create excitement for people to feel like they've accomplished something. 
Um, those were great groups for us to call on. In Washington State, we have a requirement for graduation for high school seniors that they have a certain number of hours that they have to complete for volunteer community service. So that's something to look into your area because uh, those high school kids are just wanting to get those hours done. So we will take them. Um, another thing uh, for us, sponsorship, I think is hard. So um, having people that are dedicated to that, it's just, it's just a beast. That's what it is. And so um, just knowing that going in and just go, go, go. Uh, like April said, she, she lost her don't, did she say sponsors or donors? It wasn't the sponsors, it was the donors. Uh, vendors, thank you, that's a, that's a good word. Um, we had some experience with that as well, so I would encourage um, monthly contact every single month, even if you feel like you just talked to them, give them another call. Hi, Robert, I know we just talked. Are we still on for, you know, October? Um, and then, of course, when it gets closer, maybe go to every two weeks and then definitely touch base with them within the week or few days beforehand. A lot of the vendors that we use for these type of events have a lot of turnover in their staff. Um, so whether you're talking about food vendors, balloon artists, bouncy house places, whatever it is, there's a lot of turnover in the staff. So one month you might be talking to one manager and then the next month, oh yeah, they're gone and I gotta find the paperwork on that and you're, you're kind of starting over. So that constant contact is great. Uh, love the idea of attending other walks. Um, we went to some um, for the Seattle Make-A-Wish does a great walk. Uh, the Down Syndrome Foundation, those are some that we visit. And, and I just continue to try to visit because more ideas the better. Um, and that's the way you can get connections too. I, I've gone to walks and I'll just walk up to the bouncy house person and say, I need to talk to you, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and that's how we did a lot of our event planning. Like, yeah, we're gonna do what Make-A-Wish just did. <laughs> Who do they use? Um, so, so use those connections. Uh, the toolbox, and so you're gonna be handing out the toolbox? Or? Yeah, well, so, so we've got electronic copies that many of you have, and I can send out more. We've got hard copies up here of the toolkit that you're welcome to take as well. Every single, there's a ton of attachments, and they're not all printed. Um, that much, but the task list is, which is kind of the, here's everything if you, if you don't look at anything else, and the family fundraising and family outreach, um, or fundraising for family outreach. So help yourself. If we run out of copies, I'll send you electronically, or I'll copy once I get home to mail hard copies if somebody wants to actually mail them a hard copy, or print everything and mail it to you. If anyone just doesn't like trying to find stuff electronically, it's happy to do that. Good. Good. That I think that's huge. I just credit you guys for, for doing all this. Um, for Seattle, we didn't have anything. And I'm a... <laughs> you made our list very pretty and put it in a nice package. But um, it's, it's huge to have. And, and I would encourage you, you know, we're, we're looking to expand this program. So if you are meeting people during this conference, let them know that these things are in place for them. Because um, someone coming in, like when I was approached to do the walk, I said, no way, I can't do this. I, there's, there's nothing there for me to use. But now there is. And so I think if we can touch these things and see them and show them to other people that it is doable. We've got the framework already built for you. It makes it a lot more realistic for people to do. Um, and then the last thing I would say is uh, don't be afraid. Chicago, <laughs> Jennifer, <laughs> um, at the end of the day, people, they're going to show up, they're going to, they're there to meet other people, and they're going to have a great time. So the event will run itself, essentially, at 9 a.m. or whatever time, you know, you're starting, people are going to be there, and they're going to come, and it's just going to happen, and you're just going to be along for the ride, and it's going to be a great event, so. Thank you, Julie. And we missed an introduction, Marge. I don't think you were back in the room yet when we did introductions. And you're incredible. She does so much for this organization. So let me just let you introduce yourself to, to, to the, the video guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm Marge Coffey, and my granddaughter Madison developed the disease in, when she was six years old. And we're seven years into it, and she's 13. And it's been a it was very motivating. I am very fortunate that I have the ability 
to financially and physically sponsor CureJM, and it was my lifeline, I swear. We were like, Shannon saved my life, and so did Shari. And then I worked on getting my son and my daughter-in-law, Kevin and Doreen, to do this. And they are much better than I am in their organization. And, they, and they, we all have a network. Our network is so strong. Kevin has business network. I have business network. Doreen, teacher. All our children have brought their children into what we do for fundraising. So I think we're going to be very successful at this walk, and Kevin's going to use um, the high school aspect, and uh, you, you know we'll expand on that. And I think uh, these brownies, you know, the usual community, but uh, the, the wine and sip party, it was a fun. I didn't work on that. I, I have to say, I because Doreen and her friends took over. I, I couldn't believe the amount of raffles they had, and the prizes were phenomenal. Doreen said. I am never doing. I am never re doing that part of it again," she said. "I did not like going to people and saying I want, but her friends, her friends had no problem. So yeah, you have to be aggressive. You have to be aggressive, very aggressive. And I've been lucky to be. I was, you know, I'm on the leadership council, and uh, I think it was in Baltimore. Um, no, no, it was in um, last year. Yeah, and and we were at this meeting, and people from Texas and Chicago. And it was suggested that meeting, why don't we do something with each state? Why don't we get more regionalized instead of me living in Patchogue, New York, just taking these people? So I think that's where this came about. So with great minds together, <laughs> we came up with this. And, and it's going to work. You know, it's, I'm impressed. I'm impressed with Seattle. Wow. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. So. Thank you. And I'm going to give it to Michelle in a moment for DC. And as we've heard, Simonetta is on her way here. So, um, But one, one thing that I thought of um, from what April said and something Julie said that triggered around, you know, d just always ask people. I'll just tell you a quick story. So I, to get the ride to the hotel, I used, um, I think they were called Floor Leaf. It was on the JM, Cure JM mom thing. And when I was booking it, the guy goes, well, what are you going in for? So, you know, I'm actually at the school about to pick up my kids, so I'm just trying to make sure I have a ride over here. But I stopped to tell him about Cure JM, and um, he says, wow, I'd really like to help. And he goes, are you doing anything besides the walk? Are you doing, like, an auction? I'm like, yeah, there's an auction. And he says, well, you know, I could give you guys a limo to auction off for a night. It's, like, worth $800. There's, I'm hoping the certificate's up up at the lobby waiting for me because he I called him yesterday he goes yep I'm gonna bring it over I'm gonna bring the certificate I'll bring the limo so people can see what the limo looks like which actually started to feel like more organization than I was signing up for <laughs> but you know but what it was interesting he just it just started with a quick conversation and he doesn't have any connection but he has a child with diabetes so knows what you know kind of a struggle is and had something he could offer, and so did. Um, so never be afraid, you know, whether you're at another event and you're going up to people, or you're at Costco and you're talking to people, because so many people want to give and help, they just don't know we have needs for doing that. So I didn't want to forget to say that. So um, Simonetta's on her way here. We also just got the DC date locked and loaded. You know, I'll let Michelle give an update about the chapter and anything on the walk you want to cover. <laughs> Okay, so, you know, as she said, Simonetta is in flight. Our date is June 4th. It's a Sunday. Um, and she has put in tremendous effort into getting this going. We're going to do it over at a, um, a shopping, one of the fancier shopping, outdoor shopping areas um, up in Gaithersburg, Maryland, uh, which is right off a highway, so we're hoping that's easily accessible to people to come. Um, so she has more of the actual walk details. Our whole chapter started on a fluke. We were trying to get a bunch of families together, and we had, we had uh, arranged to use a church gym, and we were going to go and have a potluck. And I made the mistake of telling Shannon about this. <laughs> and, and five weeks later, we had um, some of the top doctors, because we're in the DC area, so we had Dr. Ryder and all the doctors from the um, from GW and the myositis clinic over giving presentations to about 60, 70 people who showed up for our first meeting. Um, and so that would be the beginning of the DC chapter. 
and we'll be doing another educational conference this fall. We do have the same um, trouble getting people out. DC is a very busy area and people pride themselves on being busy and I'm dizzy busy and I'm not proud of that. Um, but that's just kind of how it, how it plays. One of the things that I have learned uh, is that I'm not a person that's gonna go necessarily ask somebody for something, but I do a lot of personal contact and try to keep in touch with people and try to hook up and grab coffee or just do that personal touch because it makes a difference in terms of their commitment and their willingness to put forward and be involved. And so I've done a fair amount of that and that was actually where our little potluck turned into educational conference kind of came from. Um, so we're kind of continuing to pursue that. So that may be all I have to offer at this point. Yeah, thanks. Um, when Simonetta gets here, just look for her, look for her name tag, and try to meet and greet her, and then we can share. And I promised I was going to come back to you, Jeff, even though you might not have wanted me to. But you do amazing um, fundraisers, and you know, I think small ones that bring in a consistent amount of money for us, you know, so it adds up really quick to big bucks. And I think it's the kind of things, it's not probably as big as the sip and paint ones. I've I've lost Kevin again. Um, but ones that, you know, probably other parents can help with and as we're reaching out to families and they're, they're, they want to do things other than just ask people for money. So could you just give a few of the examples of the fundraising you've done? Sure, I'd be happy to. We just wanted to find something once we decided to get involved that we wanted to turn the corner on this thing. You know, it, for a while it was, you've all been there. For a while it's this, it's this word. I remember the the day after diagnosis, you know, you finally get to sleep and when you wake up, there's those two words that immediately come into your head. So once we got kind of wrapped around that, we wanted to turn the corner, we wanted to do something positive for it and, and, and teach our daughter that, you know, there are things outside this, you know, that we're not the only family with an obstacle. So we started and my daughter came up with a, we did a putting and in to JDM. And it was a mini golf tournament. We expected three, four hundred dollars, you know, and we partnered with a local mini golf. We're around the Branson, Missouri area. If you've heard of that, maybe. Um, it's not all hillbillies. I mean, we're close. <laughs> but uh, we're from that area. So there's a lot of tourism, you know, family-oriented things. So we partnered with a local mini golf course, and we held a, uh, uh, just on a Friday evening, a mini golf tournament, and knocked out about 5000 bucks. So we were so excited. So we did it two years in a row, and... Um, had rain the second event, still knocked out about 3,000 on that event, and we did whole sponsorships. We had, we had, we picked up um, um, prizes and, and sold tickets for prizes and things. And people would just, you know, if they couldn't play, they they just come drop off something. So that went pretty well. And then we actually, the last couple of years, we uh, we did some raffles, and maybe this wouldn't work for your area, but for my area, a chainsaw, a rifle. A weekend stay at Big Cedar, which is kind of the big resort in our area, and um, airline tickets from the local airport, like a $200 voucher to, to any other non-stops. So reached out some some companies that we do business with, and, and those guys all stepped up and, and just gave us some money for the prizes. We And we sold, I think, $2,000 worth of raffle tickets each of those two years on that. And then we threw in a, a movie night at our at our daughter's school this year which I'm the superintendent there, so it was easy to get a space, I know. But, um, so that was good because we actually got kids involved. And they came and they just, all we did was we played a free movie and we sold concessions, hot dogs or pizza, popcorn, candy and drinks and, you know, 500 bucks in that night. So ours is not the big walk event. It is that every year we're committed to doing something. And we've learned that about every two years on these, we have to evolve into something different. So. Don't know what this next year will look like, but it will do something. But it's been really good for us. It's fun. Even my son, who's nine, he loves to get involved. And it's my you know, extended family gets involved. And it's been really good for us. So you don't have to tackle that giant monster. Lots of things. And, and there's we shot out a couple ideas to the, to the foundation. And just like you guys, I mean, they flooded us back with resources. It says, here you go. What do you need? And hey, do you need this? Yes. And in three days, there's this giant box of everything you possibly need in the mail. So they're awesome. So thank you. Thank you. Now we picked on, oh yes, Reagan. 
we've never done a walk, but we've done golf tournaments. And I can tell you, um, volunteers can be a problem, but if you go into your schools, so many of the schools have um, service hours for the kids, like they are required to do stuff for their communities. So we've gotten a lot of volunteers through that. And also where you make your big money is your sponsorships. So if you can get your sponsorships, you're gonna be good. Those are the big things. Great, thank you. Um, I just got a message from Annie uh, Mitchell out in DC and she's been doing social media stuff. So she is working on right now, she wants everybody to know that she's got the, she's working on chapter Facebook sites and I have to talked to Kevin and Doreen about that. And then um, she also is in, under construction but has a Walk Strong to Cure JM Facebook page. So Annie's trying to get us more organized <coughs> around being able to post events and getting things out externally and then our internal sites for, for using Facebook to help organize yourselves a little bit too and getting word out to your families. Um, it is the it is it, it is externally focused and it's where we will post walk events. Yeah. Great. So I picked on walks and chapters, um, and we heard a little bit from Louisiana. But I haven't given everybody a chance to speak in here. Is there anyone who haven't we haven't circled back around to that um, wants to contribute anything? Yes, Kevin. I mean, I think this is all very exciting what I'm hearing today. So I looked at this night, this day, I mean, to be a real kickoff for the New York group. I haven't been involved. Tracy's really been taking the lead, so thank you, Tracy. Uh, but what I've noticed, and I want to get everyone else's feedback, is all fundraising I've done in the past, most people come in heavy at the end. You could start now, but you're not going to get, the, you know, it may be a 10,000, worth 15,000, but the last three weeks you might get 65,000. So I don't think anyone should get discouraged by not having a lot in the beginning. Um, what I found is you have to ask, and you have to ask again, and again, and again. When we needed the money this year to help out with the, um, the event with the, I should say against the elephants, um, no, I'll have to say that, but, um, you know, I just kept, you know, people forget, you send them an email, you, you're working, you're busy, you forget about the email. You send them another one, hey, listen, it's only two days from the end of the year, tax deduction, can you get it in? Or, hey, it's a new year, it ends on the 6th, could you do it? And and some people just forget, and all of a sudden somebody gives me $500 or $200 or $100. So, and the other thing I want to try to do, and I think they, a couple people talked about it before, is just tapping the young children. Uh, I work in the school district myself, and the kids today are a lot better than we were when it came to social concerns and helping people and getting them involved. Not, maybe not as much to run the money, get the money. They can do that, but really to utilize them to be volunteers at the events, cheer people on. Uh, I think that's very important. So, and I think you mentioned, someone mentioned sponsorships is key, especially when you talk about a golf outing because golf outings cost a lot of money to run and you gotta sell raffles, you make some money there, but if you do $100 a hole and you get 50 sponsorship, you, you know, you do the math, it's 5,000 right there. So, um, you know, so that, I think that's important. It's 5,000, I'm more 50, whatever. Um, <laughs> but um, that's why I'm a CPA, I can't add. Uh, but anyway, that's just my thoughts, and uh, I look forward to hearing more from everybody this weekend. Thanks. Thank you, Kevin. Yes. There's all, we, I have done several little things, too, that, and like he was saying with the kids, um, our schools wear uniforms, and if you, they're always doing like a dress down for a dollar and you know that for all the, the, the elementary school the middle school the high school and use your kids I mean I am very guilty of that because it works I mean and Daisy loves it she feels I mean that's part of her natural ability but she really has made connections everywhere we go like someone was saying you know you were saying you're just talking to someone we have cards when Daisy makes a connection with somebody, which is 75 times a day, she hands out her cards. And I have a rare disease, and people, people fall in love with her and start following her on Facebook or Instagram. And when you have a walk or you have an event, or we do restaurant give-back nights, lots of local places do it. That's the best. And lots and lots of chain restaurants do it where they donate a portion, and, you know, you can make a easy couple hundred bucks where and if you're not a good talker or you're not good at creating a whole event those are good things to just get started and and 
use your kids. Like you were saying, kids want to help. They want to, you know, all of Daisy's friends knows she has this disease. She has to go to the hospital. You know, she's seven, so her peers don't understand, but they dress down and, oh, you know, donate a dollar or have them collect pennies. There's lots of kids who do that at our schools too. So the restaurant give back nights are um, easy. You just pass out a, a flyer or you just post it on your Facebook or whatever. And the, um, the dress down. So little stuff, you know. That's huge, thank you. Yeah, Kevin. I think you ought to personalize it. I tell people the story of Madison about six foot three in the hospital. When they hear that, and they hit them hard, they hit them right in the heart. Because that's how you get people to step on them. You gotta say how bad you do. I do it all the time. Not bad, but what you're going through, and then people are like, oh my gosh, because you have three healthy kids. That's right. I can't imagine what you're going through. You don't want to say it's, you know, when you do a crime, but whatever you need to help them do. <laughs> it's a great point, Kevin, and you guys all get it in here and in telling your story, and, and that's kind of where you guys are already in these leadership roles. As you're out with the other families, you know, people will be at different area, different places in life about ready to tell their story and ready to say it publicly, so we have to respect that, right? But encouraging it, I mean, it's it got me hooked into CareJM. I have a friend who's a, who has a daughter with juvenile um, arthritis. She tells a story that puts me into tears every time, but it gets you involved, right? And so, and then I think it, I don't know, I think for many parents, or family members, it, it's also a little bit healing. It helps to be able to, to tell it, even if it's a tearjerker. So um, I don't think, Denise, we gave you a chance with Chicago. We jumped straight to walk. So let me just see from a chapter perspective. Did we miss anything with you? Um, no, I think everything was covered really well. We started our chapter with a meet and greet. I got called by Shannon. And that, <laughs> that you know, well, yeah, Shannon. She's like this key element through this whole thing. <laughs> Uh, got called by Shannon that, that Jim Minow was going to be coming to meet doctors in Chicago. Um, I can't remember what date it was, the first, day, the first uh, week in April. Could we get a meet and greet together? And it started from there. Being the financial support network rep for the area made it easy because I already had access to the database and I could then send emails out to the families. We had a good response. We had a nice location. Um, everybody was thrilled. Their kids got to meet either other children with JM. The parents got to meet each other. Um, and it went from there. At that session, uh, Jim Minow not only brought us up to date on everything with research that we needed to know, which was great, uh, he also started the idea, threw out the idea of a chapter and of a walk, and it was welcomed by the room. And from there, we developed our chapter leaders, and I'll tell you what, at that meet and greet, they stood out. It was, it, it was not my intent to be chapter chair. I actually, there is a gal that unfortunately wasn't able to come to the conference um, that I wanted as chapter chair, but she did take another leadership role for us, which, and she's doing a fabulous job, um, and we we're, luckily, Jen Co came to the meet and greet too, so <laughs> and she became our, our walk chair. And so that was in April. We did a picnic in May. Then in October, our med medical liaison, um, um, and isn't this terrible? She's on the board, and I'm drawing a blank. Patty, Patty Lawler, uh, lined up the doctors. We had a um, medical little regional medical conference in October. We had a very good. Um, response to that, we had families that had not been able to come to meet and greet, and a few uh, brand new, uh, recently diagnosed families. Um, then we move into January, and um, Jennifer Co had already lined up a kickoff for our, our walk. That was very successful. We had a wonderful lo location provided by one of our families, and um, shortly before the walk, I was able uh, the Cook County Forest Preserve uh, District uh, did provide Jen with the date for our walk, so I was able to get a newsletter out to all our families. I sent it by mail, and it gave a summary of the previous year, everything we had done, uh, 
reintroduced our, our chapter Facebook group. And with that newsletter going out, we had, I think, eight, eight families that then asked to join our Facebook group, which is fabulous. That Facebook group makes it so easy for us to get information out to our families. So whenever Jennifer needs anything for the walk, she can throw it out there. Whenever she has an update, she can throw it out there. Um, I've had my daughter, who has JPM, sent me information that, th that stuff that's available through the state of Illinois. We can post that. Uh, as long as I, you make sure you're fully documented, documented you have it right. Like I, she got this information, then, then I also double checked with the state of Illinois websites and everything, so I was giving accurate information to these families. It's a fabulous resource. And um, then now we're heading into the walk. This is exciting. So yes, we will, I, I, I'm very proud of Jennifer and Kathy Evans with everything they've done with this walk. This is amazing. And our families that have, a, we have a lot of sponsorship that it's, it's from the families and they're networking and they're talking to their bosses. So yeah, it's it's good. So here I'm gonna turn this back over. I had nothing to say. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I mean, seriously, we wouldn't be here without all of our chapter presidents and all of our walk chairs. And you guys are doing an amazing job. I think we've used, we started a bit late, but I think we've used up our time. And I, some of you might have something to go to. I know Jen, you've got questions, so I can you know get with you on those. Tracy, if you've got any. Um, and we'll keep collecting. If, if we get BKMs outside of this forum we've just done, we'll get them back out to, to all of you. Anyone who wants hard copies or soft copies, um, hard copies up there, soft copies of anything, let me know and we'll get it out to you guys. But thank you. Huge, huge thank you for all you're doing.